Hello everybody, welcome to our fourth week in art class. Today we're going to talk about symbols. We're going to look at symbols, logos, and designs in the United States and across the world. We'll play a little logos game in the beginning, and then we'll get a chance to look at line and shape and even color and how those are a part of the logos and symbols across the world. All right, let's start with our logos game. Um, so you're gonna get to see parts of four different logos, just parts of them, not the whole thing. And I want you to see if you can identify them just from their parts. If you can, don't say it out loud because it'll ruin it for everyone else, but hold it in and know that you've got it figured out. I'm gonna give you some hints for each one. So for this first one, we might look at the blue and try to figure out what shape that is, like a sideways H. But really, maybe we should look at the white. Maybe the white is parts of letters. Let's look at the second one. Maybe you know what it is already. Let's think about the colors of red and yellow. What do we think of when we think of red and yellow? Then look at the shape of the, it's almost like a V. It's curved. What could that be? Take some time to look at this third one. I'll give you a hint. It has to do with something we drink. Probably not for kids, but a lot of adults drink it. Can you figure out what that one might be? You'll notice that it doesn't have any color. It's just black and white, but we see a face. That face must be pretty recognizable if we can figure out what that logo is without knowing who that person is. Now on this third one, you can see that there are three different colors and it seems like maybe there are three different letters, but we don't get the whole letter. I'm guessing that you can see what those letters are and maybe you know what the logo is already. All right, let's look at the answers. The first one is Facebook. They use a simple lowercase font, no capital letters, that catches the eye and is very recognizable. It hasn't changed since Facebook was launched. This next one is McDonald's. It was created in 1962 by Jim Schneider, and it was to resemble the new art shape signs on the sides of the restaurant. He merged two golden arches together to form the famous M, and we now recognize it throughout the world. So now this third one is Starbucks, and it's named after a character in a book called Moby Dick. The logo is modeled off of a 15th century woodcut, and it was actually a twin-tailed mermaid. Their logo has changed four times since the company was launched in 1971. This last one is Google. Google is a play on the word Google, which is a math term for the number one followed by 100 zeros. The term reflects Google's mission to organize an infinite amount of information on the web. Now, this logo is interesting because Google often makes special modifications. So they'll change their logo or like this one that has a zipper or the one that looks like a, a subway map. They'll change their logo to honor different people. They also ask students sometimes to design the Google logo. So let's quickly talk about colors. Colors mean different things in different countries. China, for example, has uh, some traditions linked to color. Yellow for earth, white for metal, blue-green for wood, red for fire, and black for water. Red is an especially significant color, and it's used in wedding ceremonies, during revolutions, and everyday life to promote good luck and joy. Colombia uh, colors connect the physical world and the people who live in it. According to Colombian folk beliefs, 
Illnesses have color also. Light colored illnesses, white, red, and yellow are curable, while dark colored illnesses, black, blue, and green are incurable. The colors of the country's liberal and conservative parties, red and blue, are represented in the flag. Ethiopian colors are so important, they have come to mean the African identity as a whole. The red in the flag stands for faith and power. Yellow stands for peace, church, love, and natural wealth. And green stands for land and hope. Egypt is an ancient land with rich and powerful traditions. The flag's use of red, white, and black refer to Egypt's revolution which was a fight, its promising future, and the dark days the country has left behind. Green is a sacred color for Muslims and is now viewed as the national color of the country. In Ukraine, their flag is only blue and yellow, but there are famous Easter eggs with patterned shapes that we know around the entire world. On those eggs, yellow stands for light and purity, orange for strength, Black stands for fear and death. Brown stands for the earth. Blue for good health. White for innocence. Purple for faith and trust. Green for fertility and hope. And red represents action or awakening. Let's look at one more country. British color tradition is rooted in the country's rich history and culture. The royal colors are influenced by British royalty, and their deeply saturated colors like purple, blue, red, and green. So we've taken some time to look at color. Now let's look at some devices of art, like line and shape. Those are also called elements of art. We can use these devices in any symbol or logo or design that we create. Lines and shapes tend to have different meanings, so we should pay attention to how we use them. A diagonal line, for instance, shows action, while a horizontal line may show rest. A vertical line might show strength or someone standing. These three simple geometric shapes, the circle, the triangle, the square, can all be arranged in different ways to create lots of different designs. The triangle pointed up maybe looks like a mountain. If I point it to the side and attach a rectangle, I can make an arrow. A circle could be a sun or an eye, maybe a connection like we work our way around the globe. A square could represent a box or a building. There's so many different things that these shapes could represent. This artwork is a playful artwork by Keith Haring. His work grew popular in New York City. He was known as a, a fierce advocate for the LGBTQ population, and he often drew chalk outlines of people and dogs and other playful uh, images. And he did a lot of work on the advertising space backgrounds, if they were black or plain, bl plain white. And after public recognition, he was commissioned to do large works like colorful murals. He's widely become recognized as visual language. So he uses these figures to talk. So now that we have all this information, I'd like to ask for your help. We are living through historic times. We can't be together. And even if we do return to school together, some of you may stay at home. And if you're in person, we won't be able to hug or touch or be close with one another. So maybe we need a symbol, something that could connect us together. Let's think about a symbol that we can create together. Something that shows we care about each other, shows love, something that shows we're part of a whole, we're part of a group, something that shows that we're not alone even when it seems like it. Maybe this symbol could be something that we share with everyone. And maybe like the rainbows at the beginning of the pandemic, 
It might be something that we put in the windows of each home to help each other recognize that we're together in this.